three. You ready to see it? Okay. Do you I sure? get a little drum roll? Oh, uh, you get a drum, drum roll, please. <laughs> ah! Whoa, ho, 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 whoa. Peace, peace. This is Just Blaze, and I'm teaming up with the sneaker designer to the stars, Caddy Customs, and we're making one-of-one shoes for some of the most iconic names in our culture. Our guest today is live from Brick City, the Funk Doc. He is the definition of a living rap legend and some of your favorite rappers' favorite rapper. His unique ability to give us aggressive content with comedic overtones and personality is part of the reason why he's one of the best to ever do. Can Caddy and I create a shoe that will impress the Superman lover? Or is Uncle Cooley gonna kick us to the curb? Let's find out. Welcome to Fresh Pit. Red Man, let's go! <laughs> What up, Brad? How you I'm doing? I'm good. Yeah? Yes. It's always good to see you, man. It's a, it's a blessing to be alive. Before we get into it, I got to see what you're rocking. OK, well, you see me right here. Baby Max back. Plus. What you got on, Kenny? I got on the uh, Concepts Air Max 1. I see. You know, these hard. Is, these hard, huh? Very impressive. <laughs> hard, girl. Thank I'm you. hard. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. What you got on, Blaze? Uh, some Dornbecker 4s from a few years back. Um, some, some of my prized possessions. OK, so wait, the Dornbecker, the Dornbecker, that's from the children's yes, hospital. Yes, the children's they, hospital, right. And they created, right? Exactly. They, they let the kids design a sneaker every year, and I believe some of the proceeds go back to the hospital oh, as well. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. So shout out, shout out, shout out to Dora Becker. Yeah. So basically, we created this shoe about you. This is you. Can't nobody wear it. Can't nobody do nothing. We, Say no more. We love you as an individual. We love you as an actor. We love you as a as a personality. You know, we know that you're crazy. We know that you're cool. You know, you ain't afraid to be you. Exactly. And that's what we love. You know what okay. I'm saying? So with these shoes, I wanted to be you. Okay. And live through you. You ready to see it? Okay. Do you I get sure? a little drum roll? Oh, uh, you get a drum roll, drum roll please! <laughs> ah! Whoa, ho, 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 ah. whoa! Um, obviously, you rep Brick City. Yes, sir. Mm. And uh, these are inspired by uh, Doc's The Name cover. If you okay. see, we got the swoosh breaking through it the I same see. way mm -hmm. your figure was breaking through it. I see, the... uh -huh. I see. Why don't you all put them on about the, what we did with the bricks? Yeah, so we wanted to match that album cover. If you look closely, you can see the texture of the bricks. You can see that the Nike swoosh is breaking through, like how you was breaking through on the album. Absolutely. That was you with the. Absolutely. You know this is fresh. Oh. I like that. This is you dope. You like that? Dope. Ah, Dope. nice. Dope. And you can feel the texture, too. That wasn't something easy to do. And it got a furry tongue. This is yeah. hot. Yeah. So What's this, Meek? What is it, velvet? What is it, velvet? What is it, velvet? This is dope. We're going to get into every aspect of the shoe. Going back to Doc's The Name, right? And then, like, There Is A Dark Side, What The Album, so many different covers you've had. They've, they've all been consistent, but they're all iconic in their own way. Um... Who comes up with the designs for your covers? Because they're so creative. Like me. Yeah? yeah. Wow. And, and uh, like the team I work with, like at the time, Def Jam was very effective right. on building the artists. Right. Okay. And uh, helping that artists get their look, right. their niche. So uh, like in the early years, I was working with Def Jam. Um, they kind of gave me the ball to just be creative. Right. Okay. So I, I, I brought my creativity to the staff that was part of the artwork of Def Jam, and they made it come true. They made it all happen. So you give them the vision and they will execute. Big facts. Going through this, right? Uh-huh. I was thinking about, like I said, you have a lot of iconic imagery. One of my earliest memories of uh, iconic imagery of yours was that source cover you did. And this shoe was very much inspired by that. So if you notice, Yes, we had you know we we had the pony hair on on the tongue, mm -hmm. but it was really representative Your of hair. the fro. Yep. Oh wow, this was the, with this for. Yeah. yeah, and then the yeah. tissue. It's for the nose. Yeah, it's yeah. the nose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you came in the game very much just as yourself. Like even the fact that you used your own name. I can't think of any other artist that was doing that on a regular basis at that time. Right. right. Was that a conscious effort? They smelling good. Yeah, it do smell good. It smells nice. Nice. So nice. my thing is like, and what I encourage like young artists is your first impression is your last impression, right? Right. Um, I knew when I came in the game that I was going to have longevity. Right. Like this was going to be my life giving gift that I'm going to be giving to the people. Nice. So uh, 
using a tissue in my nose because the tissue uh, symbolized I had allergy. Right. Oh, you know, okay. When pollen season come in, I'm a I'm a mess. I'm horrible. Right. And anybody that got allergies can relate. I see the hands out there. <laughs> when that pollen season come in, I am horrible. Tissue in my nose help the running to stop and, right. and so I won't breathe out of one nostril. Okay. And sometimes it is stopped in one nostril and then it goes to the <laughs> other nostril. So I knew that being myself was going to resonate right. more with my fans because right. I like make a connection. Mm -hmm. Not just through the music, but how I move, my energy, my 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 persona, my aura, my aura. And people dug it because they was like, wow, here's a guy that got bars but he's not afraid to be himself. He's not right. afraid to uh, let the world know how transparent he is about right. his life. Right. right. Um, using my name, my the tissue in my nose, and what I talked about right. was like very transparent. Right. People right. resonated with it. No doubt. And that was my my, uh, my goal. And that speaks a lot too when you did the MTV Cribs thing. Big and facts. Yeah, right. you you let you let it out. Like it was just it was you. And I know a lot of people resonated with that. I know a lot of people was like, you know what? If they wasn't a fan before, they was definitely a fan then. Like, okay. well, let's be very clear. A lot of people was renting houses, right? Oh, yeah, for the MTV <laughs> cribs. And I used to be like, yo, they wow. house is too neat. <laughs> every every house they showed on there was neat. The refrigerator was stacked. Full with yeah. food and water, all neat. I was like, yo, there's something going on that I'm not getting. <laughs> Until they asked me, it was like, yo, we want to do your MTV Cribs. And I was like, oh, and the first thing they asked, they said was, all right, we got a couple of houses picked out for you. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, you know what? I got a house for y'all to come to. <laughs> And yo, straight up, yo, like, no no BS, yo. They came to my crib, and they walked in my door, because I caught them off guard. They have no, uh, they have no clue on how I was living. So they walked up in my shit, and they, they started looking around like, yo, you live up in here? I was like, yeah, I live up in here. My cousin was sleeping on the floor, and after I showed them the crib, they went outside and had a meeting. Oh, wow. <laughs> So, so, and it was like a film crew of almost this size, and they dumbed it down to like two people, <laughs> one camera guy and one sound guy, and that was it. They was because wow. that was all that could fit in my house, and they shot it, and at the end they edited and whatever, and then we made magic. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we made magic. No, we're going back to you again. That goes back to just you being you. These are so fresh. Like, thank you, thank you, thank like, you. Fresh, fresh air. Absolutely. Yeah. You came in the game as such an individual, but. You had so many different personalities. You know, you had Funk Doctor Spock, Reggie Noble, Uncle, what was it Uncle Willie? Uncle Quilly. Uncle Quilly, yeah. Uncle Quilly. Um, Uncle Quilly. Superman Lover, of yeah. course. And yes. that was for me that the reason why Superman Lover has always resonated with me is because I like when artists carry themes throughout their bodies of work. Like how EPMD had a Jane on yeah, almost every That's album. where I got it from. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So like if you look at the tongue. Yeah. We created you a logo and everything. I see. You like I see that? Superman level. I seen it when I first looked. I was like, wow, they got the Ooh. Superman level on the tongue. They right. wilding right now. <laughs> they wilding. Nah, that's dope. That's dope. Fire. So when yeah. you pulling in all these different personalities and all these motifs, like who were your biggest influences coming up in terms of just artistry, creativity, you know, and entertainment in general? Because you're a very entertaining dude. Well, I tell you the elements of 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 artists that that makes red man. Okay. Um, first of all, KRS One. Okay. Hands down. Nice. Um, he's my mentor. He distinctly makes it clear between a rapper and an MC. Right. Okay. Uh, for those who don't know out there, a rapper is anyone. Like my grandmother can pick up a mic and rap. She's a rapper, which goes on in the industry now right. because we have the internet, and anyone can get on the internet and start rapping and be okay. the next hot right. person. A MC is a person that controls the crowd. Right. Master ceremony. Right. Can go in the crowd, don't matter how big the crowd, small the crowd, they turn the crowd inside out when they on stage. Right. And that represents KRS One. Then it's Slick Rick. That's okay. where I got the personalities from. Right. You know, Slick Rick had mad personalities. He was right. talking to himself on record. That's why I picked that up from EPMD as a group and WA as a group. And Ice Cube. I mean, even though he's in, in WA, but Ice Cube is another element that made who I am. That's no dope. Yeah. That's dope. So you have all these personalities on record. 
But another thing that was very uh, important in your imagery throughout your career has been um, the videos. They've always been super creative, mm. entertaining, mm. sometimes hilarious. Mm -hmm. You Big think about it, like, I'll be that. Slap the shit out you. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, it's, what's your favorite video of yours that you've ever done? Jeez, that's a good one. I don't know. It's between, like, I'll be that and slap the shit out you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because it was, I'll be that, like, I'll be that was, like, uh, where I first kind of uh, brought, like, things I wanted into life. Like, my videos before that was dope, but I'll be that was, like, my first video where a lot of character of me right. came out in a video and things I liked and seen shot by Diane Martell. Okay. Um, for the simple fact of the girl falling on a bike in the beginning. Yeah, right. yeah, I brought yeah. that to life and <laughs> people resonated with it. Right. It was a video that people resonated with. Right. Slap the shit out you. Well, that's... Yeah, that goes without saying. You know, that's already spoken for. Slapping people through the whole video is a <laughs> must. <laughs> There's been a whole lot of slapping going on lately, too. They be referring my video to. You know, I ain't going to lie, you know. Okay. So everyone needs a good slap sometimes. Right, right, so right. I don't promote violence, but a little slap. You go a long way. Yeah, it goes a long yeah. way. There was a lot of things that we tried to do with the shoe, but we didn't want to overdo it because it was already so much. Mm -hmm. Like, at one point, we had the Dare is a Dark Side Towers going around the yeah. side. We oh, had that would have been stupid. Yeah, we had the Star, we had the, yeah. the Star Trek logo, uh, the arch for, for, for Funk Dr. Spock here, but it was just, the we were trying to keep it. it flashy but clean. Yeah. Right, right, So, right. But I do want to ask you about There Is A Dark Side specifically because as dope as the first album was, I feel like that album was such a departure. It's almost like you came into your own as an all-around artist. A lot of what the album felt like, all right, this is Eric Sermon on the beats, mm -hmm. you on the rhymes. There was a dark side that felt like you had arrived all around producing, rhyming, you know, just kind of really finding your core. Um, which do you feel is the better album? Between those two? Yeah. I'm asking this for a reason because there was there was what, a, what the album I was I was high as hell on Dare's a Dark Side. <laughs> I was experiencing a lot of drugs on right. Dare. I the, was acid up on Dare's the a Bamba Dark Z. Side. Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah, I was I was doing acid on um, Dare's a Dark Side. Yeah. Mm. I like I don't re remember none of that process <laughs> wow. to the album, and that's like my least likable album. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And what I find interesting is that women. Like more women came to me on that album, say, "Yo, that there's a dark side." Then any, and that I find those women weird as fuck. <laughs> I was like, "Yo, are you serious?" Like, yo, like, yo, you wilding right now, sis. She like, "Yo, nah, that there's a dark side, man, man." I'm like, "Yo, you crazy, yo?" Because I don't remember no rhymes off of it. I right. never do none of those songs in the show. Wow. Anything. You know I, what? I just realized that you don't. I don't. I don't. It was a real dark moment on that album. But it was oh. dope because I did do a lot of production and I, I, it, it, look, put it this way. I, I guess I tapped into a, a, a wave of what people was feeling out there on that, that album moment, because right. uh, one thing I can appreciate about the album, though, is the album cover. The cover okay. was amazing. I, I buried myself literally for that cover. I right. found, and the, what's that, the electric uh, towers, towers yeah. in the back. All that was real. None of that, nothing on that album was... Was no Photoshop. Really, no or, Photoshop oh, wow. or anything. Everything was real. I, I buried myself right under the towers, risking cancer, everything. Right. Wow. And I wanted to implement the Funkadelic The Funkadelic album. Album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all that was real. So but everything that. else, I don't remember nothing. Jack. Wow. And Blank. Uh, didn't Rock work on that album as well, right, Rockwell? Yes, he did. Okay. Speaking of Rockwell, though, the song itself... Classic, one of the best, one of the best records in hip hop history. Why did y'all not release the full version ever? Because I know it exists. I heard a longer version at the office once. <laughs> I heard it one yo, time. Yo, Meth, yo, Rock, did y'all hear that? Yeah. Did y'all hear that right there? Thank you. I was in, I think I was in Philae. Remember Philae? Yeah, I know Philae. Yeah. That's my sister right, right there. I was in Philae's office. And this was around the same time that, Ooh, God, that I think huh. I had huh. gave her the beat that became React years right. later. And it was playing. And when it came out... You gave me that beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And Eric, Eric Sermon took it. Right. Yes. So mm. I remember um, 
are playing it in the office, and I love the record. And then when it came out, it ended on la 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 la. I was like, "Where's the rest of the record? Ah, Why did yeah, that I get chopped?" Ah. First off, I want to thank you for clearing up twenty five to twenty twenty to twenty five years of history of debating. Like, was there a longer version of Rockwalla? And I told them it was. Yes. Um. But you know what? Like, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of editing. Like, I love right. to edit. It was dope, but it was it it didn't resonate the way it did if I hadn't cut it. Right. Mm. No, 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 I was no, I will agree with that. Like, part of the beauty of the record is, you know, as a DJ, right? When you're playing music, sometimes you have, like one of the tricks is just play the song, the parts of the song that the people love, and you get you get in, you get out, right? Right. That's one of those records where because it's only like two minutes and 35 seconds or something exactly. like that, you can just play the whole record. Exactly. No verses getting cut out. Yeah, nothing, Nobody's no, nothing's getting, getting cut. cut out. Nothing's huh. getting cut. You know, and as soon as, 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 it, as soon as it starts, two minutes later it's over, but it ends on the right beat, which is everybody sing. The whole crowd is singing la, 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 exactly. la, 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 la. So it was the right choice, but the fan in me <laughs> wishes that I could hear the full version. Um, just because I, I I I love the record so much, you know. But I get why I get why it happened. I'm conflicted. Like, if if it would have went longer, no, it wouldn't have been as effective. It wouldn't have been as effective. I agree. I'm just saying the fan of me now wants to hear the full version. Oh, It'd be fun to hear it now. Right, right exactly. <laughs> It'd be fun to hear it. But now. it was the right decision back back then. Exactly. But thank you because everybody else that I've asked, like I've asked Rock Rock, it's like nah, that was it. And I'm like no, bro. There was <laughs> thank a longer you. version. <laughs> Yo, that is so great that you said that. Now we got it documented that yes. we did have yes. a long version. Yes. Do you have a full version on your phone? Absolutely not. <laughs> I want to hear the full version. I, 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 I want to hear the full version. <laughs> right. We're going to track it down. Okay. Yeah. So shifting gears a little bit, um, we had Jada on the show earlier in the season. Yeah. And one of the things that he was that he mentioned was like his process and what he went through trying to get into the game. Um, and what the bars were back then. And his exact words were, if Biggie or Redman don't think you hot, you're not getting on. Yeah. Was there a certain point where it actually hit you, like how much you mattered to the culture? I never judged if I made it through the industry. Okay. okay. I judged me making it through the people. Because right. okay. I'm, I'm a people's man. I'm a, I consider myself like a blue-collared, MC, like for the people. Right. Um, when a person comes up to me and be like, you know, Red Man, you the soundtrack of my life. Um, you helped me get through anxiety. Uh, you helped me get through pain. You helped me get through college. Um, you helped me get through jail. I got a lot of that. That's when I take it as I'm doing something out here. Not made it because we are never make it. Right. We Absolutely. always got to support our here right. and what we're doing because we have a journey that we're on and you never get there. When they're giving me my flowers in a state where I'm accepting it like I'm doing my job, that's when I know that I'm doing my job. Right. I'm making it. Right. I'm actually putting out good energy out there for people to benefit off of, learn from. Mm -hmm. And as, as I'm learning, as they learn it from me, I'm learning from them. Because right. when I see their gratitude, I'm like, Wow, shit! Let me get back in this booth. Let me get yeah. back on this right. on this yeah. music so I can continue this journey. Right. Because I'm not just doing it for me. I'm doing it for them as well. I'm Absolutely. doing it for the world. Just like Bob Marley wanted to heal people through his music. Right. That's the route I want to go. That's the route I'm doing. I want to just heal people through the music. Absolutely. And that's when I know I not made it, but I'm making a difference. Right. No doubt, salute that to that. That was dope, right? That was kind of dope, yeah. right? That was good. I deserve a clap for that, right? You see how I ended it? I was like, making a difference. <laughs> that was like a Barack Obama speech. Yeah, I know, right? Right, right. So, um, Caddy, why don't you run him through the uh, insoles real quick? So the insoles... I seen the Death Squad in I, one I know, of them. Wow. right? But check this one out. And this one is the method of the man. Method oh, the method of the man. For the man. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, <laughs> you wild. So that's standing on your foundation. Right. One of the things that we always try to do with the souls, or with, either with the soul or the insole, is, you know, we have a running theme that's called standing on your, on your foundation. Right. Now, you have uh, the unique experience of 
damn near being part of two crews, right? Yes. You have, <laughs> on, one, on one side, we have Def Squad. Mm -hmm. On the other side, we have, you know, your relationship with Meth, mm -hmm. which leads into your relationship with the Wu. That's right. I'm, um, on the, I'm official 11th member. Right. Whereas a lot of artists, they catch that first wave, they have their movement, and then it's a wrap. That's right. Somebody uh, at Def Jam comes with this month of the man thing. Um, and it gives you a whole new path. You know, a whole new, a whole new part of your journey. Right. Um, that, that started out as a tour, tour right? Mm -hmm. tour. And then it just never stopped. No. Right. You fast forward twenty years later, was there? There's albums. There, there's there's TV TV shows. There's movies. How did your meth even get cool like that? You know what? We gotta uh, give the the honor to Leo Cohen, okay. Kevin Lau, Sunita Floyd, Philan, the whole team. Um, at that time. Like, I had been on Def Jam a year. I dropped my first album. Right. Then Meth came along. And it was like, all right. They was like, we got a promotional tour that's going around to, like, maybe, like, 30 to 40 cities. And, you know, our promotional tour back then was about shaking people's hands. We mm -hmm. had the internet where we could just say hi to, to everybody, to millions of people. We right. actually had to jump in a van right. with a gang of bud, of course. <laughs> and... Go meet the public. Right. Okay. Shake some hands. And they decided to put us on it. And our relationship, like, like, because I just started this like two months ago. Like, yo, our relationship kind of started on how how high the movie started. He ain't have the <laughs> blunt and I, I ain't have the bud. Right. <laughs> that's what it was. And meant. that's how our relationship was. Like when we first started the month of the man tour, which one of the, which was one of the most pivotal promo tours there was. Ever, yeah, for um, sure. We was on a van. And it was like, all right, cool. What's up? What's up, my nigga? You, uh, uh, <laughs> we rolling and shit. So he immediately rolling up, and I'm like, I'm rolling up. All right, this nigga smoke, but he smokes. <laughs> and then he was saying the same thing. Like, all right, this nigga smoke. He he ain't let down yet. Right. So we just smoking. Um, and then it was like. I had beats because I was always mm -hmm. like had a beat tape on me. I was right. always t putting it in the van, turning it up, cranking, busting out some lyrics. And when I did that, I seen him get into it. Like he ain't complaining about, yo, let's listen to this or nothing. He just pulled out the pen and just started going at it. Right. Oh. So it was just sort of like you got beats and like, yo, you smoke kind of thing. And that kind of that kind of tied us in. Right. And okay. what I can honestly say, bro, like, we was never jealous of each other. We was never envious. Uh, we didn't care about bread. Like we we love what we're doing. So when you do things what you love, mm -hmm. money comes in abundantly. Right. Um, and one thing we had was respect right. of each other as men. Right. And we we listened to each other. We communicated. Right. Uh, which a lot of people don't do. No doubt so to that. That's dope. Um funny funny thing is sidebar, and I've never told you this. Both of you guys were very instrumental in my career. Years before I ever even became Just Blaze. Okay. I used to DJ at a roller skating rink called Skaters World. I was like 15, 16 at the time. And we started, you know, it was, uh, we would do like a 9 to 12, it would be skating. And then from like 12 to 2, we would open up the uh, skating rink and it would just be a party. So the first two acts we ever booked was you and Meth separately though. Mm -hmm. But we booked Meth first, mm -hmm. right when Takao came out. It was a riot. Mm -hmm. Like, this might have been like within two weeks of the album dropping. Okay. A couple weeks later, we actually ended up having you come out. Mm -hmm. um, and this was right before the second album was about to was about to drop. Okay. But for me, I mean, obviously we've been friends for for a long time now. But sitting here having this conversation with you as a fan, but also as a peer, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm honored and I'm humbled. Booking those two events. Again, when I was like 16 years old, was what actually made me believe I might actually be able to do this for a living. See, nice. Dope. You know, um, and at your show, you, you, like I said, you don't really remember the show, but you actually let me stay up there on the stage. Wow. And kind of, I'm watching Twins DJ and I'm watching you do your thing. And that was super inspirational. But being able to stand there behind you and just watch your energy. Um, was something that always meant a lot. To hey, that's so, what we do. Thank you, man. That's Appreciate what we do. That's Appreciate what we do, you. brother. That's cool. Yo, so Red, we got a surprise for you, and I think you're gonna love it. Um, can somebody get my heat gun, please? Oh, okay. So boom, right? We got some extra Nike swishes here. You hold that one. Okay. 
And I'm going to hold this one and look. It's like the cigarette burning, the oh, blunt wow. burning. It's crazy, yo. <laughs> but, the, but the idea is it's you just... Swap them out. Swap them out. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wow. do it on the other side. Okay. So let me just put that right on there. Okay. Oh, wow, that's, that's fresh. Yeah, it's hard, right? That's yeah. fresh. Look at that, y'all. That's hot. Yes, it is. So you can change your Nike swishes to whatever how you feeling that day. You feel like you finna just blow a bag of weed. You put these on. <laughs> Say less. You know what I'm saying? Wow, this is fresh. <laughs> you got mortal, so we yeah, got... Hit me up one more time I on hit you one. up again. Hold <laughs> on. I hit you up again. Yeah, that's fresh. <laughs> Oh, it look lit, too. That yeah. shit is lit, yo. Yeah. That shit lit, literally. <laughs> we also got you some uh, some elephant print ones. Yeah. As well. Oh, wow. This yeah. is dope. Gifts. So, I yeah. love gifts. You love yeah. gifts? I love <laughs> gifts, definitely. So however you feeling, you could just change them up. Yeah, oh, all these I could keep. All these yeah. is yours. Oh, all these yeah. This is, this is the shit. This and is it's all about you. It's telling you, you know, your life, who you are. How you just a rebel and just the man in these streets. You inspire everybody. Obviously, you inspire my boy, Just Blaze. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So. Thank you. I appreciate really? the gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, going back to what you were saying about how, math, you know, one of the early uh, interactions that led to the, the, the friendship was the bud, right? Mm -hmm. So, we had Styles on the show. You know, Styles is obviously a, a huge weed advocate. Mm -hmm. um, he listed his top five smokers. Um, who do you think can hang with you? Let's be very clear. Okay. Only artists like Snoop, B Real, B right. e Mev, uh, Styles, right. Wiz, Currency. Mm -hmm. um, we can only hang with each other far as artists um, smoking together. Right. Like to the average head out in the street, no one can hang with us. Man. Right. Because here's the thing a lot of people have to get up for jobs and nine to fives. <laughs> and where you guys need sleep, that's when we're smoking. Right. When we wake and bake, we start the day of from there. And it's a constant run until we fall asleep. And, uh, you know, rapper hours, MC hours, artist hours are from like maybe a 10 in the morning on to like 5, and six in the morning. Right. Wow. So we're blowing it down from those in, in in all those hours. In between those hours, we're blowing it down, leaving no room for nine to five and <laughs> no room for for uh, other things that rec standard people do. Right. And responsibilities. Right. Wow. These shoes was made for you. Does this yes. match your style? Is this something that you would wear to a party performance? Well, especially after seeing them on the show, of course I'm going to rock these. Okay, because like, you were talking fresh. about selling them earlier, and I'm like, what No, I'm just saying, about? like, I might put my foot in them, like, a couple of times, and if someone offered me a great price... Oh, yeah, I'll do it. I'll I'm going to be like, yo, you know what? I'll let these go for, like... What would that price be? Ah, it'd be, like, 20 grand. Oh, that's what I'm talking There we go. About. It'd be, like, 20 grand. It'd be, like, 20 grand. If not, they staying up in the shelf, they staying up in my... My closet's the way it can be seen. I'm going to put them in the right. glass and, and you everything. Heard yeah. it here first. Absolutely. On Fresh Pit. That's right. Doc, it's always a pleasure to have you, man. Whenever Absolutely. I call you, you're always there. It's really appreciated, man. Yes, sir. Anytime, bro. You no know doubt. Make some noise for Redman one time, y'all. So, bro, how you feel about the shoes? No, I love the shoes, bro. Come yeah. on, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Look at them Jordans right there. Number one. Oh, that's one of the things we, for we forgot to uh, touch. Now, I know you're used to writing, so we tried to like get your old signature from the joint. Mm -hmm. but the idea was kind of like how I remember Beach Street, spit went right over the uh, uh -huh. grass. So that was the idea, kind of like try to spit the Jordan out. Oh, wow, yeah, that's, dope. that's like, yeah, dope. Man, as long as you love it, we're good. No, no, this shit is dope. All right, cool, let's box dope. these up. No. Send you back with the custom box. Wow, this is amazing. And these are amazing. Like, you see the smoke on the side, like, this is fresh. This is innovative. This is fresh. This is different. And that's what we're about, being different, being innovative. Being different and being yourself. That's right. No doubt. All right, there you go. Boom. Got my fresh purr. Hold that for me. I thought he's in here for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, 
Go ahead. My brother, that's all you? Yes, sir. Thanks for coming out. Woo! Uh, my brother. That's, that's all, man. You see that right there, right? 